meeting to order. 1.33 p.m. Rudy Castellano. Present. Mike Cousins. Present. Mike Martinez. Present. Travis Hearn. Present. Maria Gilberry. Here. Um, we got a call from Mike Sweeney Present. that he wouldn't be able to make it to the meeting, so I marked him as excused. There is a quorum. Thank you, Johnny. <laughs> I have a motion to approve the agenda. Let you motion to the agenda. I second that motion. I got a motion for Mike Martinez, a second from Luke Castellano. All in favor? Aye. <clears throat> Opposed? Aye. Right. Motion to approve the minutes of the last meeting on this night. Second, I have a motion by Mike Martinez, a second by Rooney. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Is there any public input, son? There is not. I did not receive any public input via telephone or email or regular mail or drop off. Okay, we'll move on to business items. And uh, getting recommendation, recommendation for approval of resolution 22-42, assigning signatory, signatory authority for the 8th Street Waterline Grant. So the city has received uh, funding to uh, do a little work on the 8th Street Extension Water Line Construction Project as part of the grant agreement process. Um, the official represent, uh, representatives of the city um, have a signatory document they must sign and the council must uh, approve resolution for those folks, which would be the city manager, deputy finance director, uh, are authorized to sign the grant agreement uh, and disperse the request of the documents and that uh, the utilities director and the project manager are the designated uh, employees that will take care of the monthly CPMS updates. So that will go before council on the provisional resolution. Just to share, I have one question. CPMS? Um, we just lost it. I don't remember exactly what each letter stands for, but it is a state uh, website where every capital outlay funding is tracked to show that it's been awarded and spent on a particular statuses and it's a monthly update. Oh, did he ask about CPMS? CPMS, what the letter CPMS stand for? Capital Projects Monitoring System. It's actually on the resolution. Itself. I didn't see it. Can okay, we tell it where? Uh, it's in the bottom, it's in the last paragraph of the resolution. Thank you, Shelly. You're welcome. Maria, is there a. You have a, a project. Price yet? Or? No, uh, they're still going through planning. Yeah. I just wanted. Yeah. It's chairman. I yes. haven't read this resolution. It seems to be pretty much because Brian it's needed. So I make a motion to be make a recommendation to the city council that they approve this resolution. Uh, Shawnee. Can you bear up, uh, actually, 
Chairman, I, I think uh, I have a question for Shawnee to verify. We authorize to sign the grant agreement. In the resolution, we say the mayor is authorized to sign the grant agreement. On the signatory sheet, we put Leo Maestas and Dominic Chavez. Should that be the mayor that is authorized to sign the grant agreement? That way it uh, matches the resolution. Hold on. Yes, it sh on the. It should match the resolution. Do you, in the last one we did, which was an update. Huh. Do you know if we had the the mayor and the city manager, or just the mayor, or did we do it like this? I believe it was the mayor. That's why the mayor is on this one. Right. So we may just need to update that signature sheet. Okay. So we need to verify that the actual signature sheet has the correct names. And okay. <laughs> Will do. So I would still request that we approve uh, the, the resolution itself is accurate. I believe that the signature sheet may need to be updated. Think I have a second. Hello. Motion by Rudy. Second by Mike Martinez. Uh, on the check with the changes to the signatory sheet. We have a uh, staff verify who the correct authorization to sign the grant should be on the signature. Okay. So with those by motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. March. Um, recommendation, recommendation for approval of resolution 2243 to submit an application for funding to the State Board of Finance for emergency assistance. So this resolution is, uh, the city is looking at requesting assistance uh, for funding on the, where it says here. So it's for financial assistance for the planning to mitigate long-term water system improvements. Uh, we're looking at using every method to, to be able to receive some emergency funding. Uh, the uh, State Board of Finance uh, has has an opportunity for that, so we'd like to go ahead and have this resolution so that we continue with the process of seeking funding through the State Board of Finance. So this, in terms of the resolution, all you're asking is um, city permission to file an application. Apply, 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 so it's not necessarily for anything in particular right now. Correct. We're still uh, trying to see how we can handle. Yeah. The best way is to get the funding. Who is consulting with you on this? Uh, yeah. our, en our engineers, the governor's office, our consultants. All went through that process. And as far as this goes, this one is for $300,000. Yes. Motion to not get it. Second. So it does carry a monetary amount? Yes. On the resolution, there has a $300,000 request. The monetary amount is being as for the people whatever the particular so this particular project is a planning project so it's administrated much so correct and any project starts with PERs, tech memos yeah yes yeah. 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 again the money's coming from where or the New Mexico State Board of Finance Emergency Water Fund. Yes. I mean, this is really big, but it's in, and it's good that somebody's stepping up to do it and, and somebody's stepping up to ask for it. So, yeah, I'll make a motion now. Our resolution number 22 43 um, to submit an application for funding from the State Board of Finance for emergency assistance be forwarded to the 
for the community that's going to be what will be managed for the city council. I'll second that motion to before you do. Okay, we have a motion by Rudy, a second by Mike Martinez, all in favor? Opposed. Three recommendations for approval of the resolution 2247 to submit an application for funding to the New Mexico Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Management for a new water treatment plan. So there is another potential funding opportunity through DHSEM. There are multiple actual funding uh, programs on DHSEM, so this just authorizes us. Uh, we're asking again to be able to submit the, the notice of interest for an application um, for, uh, for funding. This one is specifically for uh, new water treatment plan. Would that be a, a pre-treatment plan? No, or this is for a water treatment plan. The whole yes. The, um, the format of this resolution is different from the other two, that well, at least from the other one. Uh, we'll put it all in public criteria, but that's why we put it in here. Correct. So the entire history of what led us to the point where we need this. This is for, the, is for the government. Yes. Yeah. So, okay, I can understand that. But well, it's for the New Mexico Department of Homeland Security. So yeah. we're requesting oh. the public. And so they, they need to know all this stuff in advance? Uh, it's, it's the resolution, so it's making the council is making the statement. But all of this happened, and we need assistance because all of this happened. Does this carry a monetary amount? No. See, it's 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 giving us approval to submit an application oh, or a letter of interest, or a notice of interest. In the notice of interest, we will have the dollar amounts and the specific clients. Who is going to be responsible for putting it together? I've already put them. I'm already in process. Of it. It's great. It's a one. It's a one page notes of interest. I'm just wondering if it's going to be like a more extensive treatment. Than yes. The intent with it. this treatment plan is to be a treatment plan. A modern a future. Will take will be pretty water and turn it into. We'll have to, uh, we we expect our engineers to look at all possible pre-treatment, sediment removal, disinfection, modern methods, uh, and. To, to be able to address the horrible water that we currently have to deal with. Would it be said on site? The other one? No, the other one will be the flush. That we remember the way. And the okay. We yeah. continue to use that plant until we have a new plant to replace it. That's up to you. Yeah. Okay, again, I, I asked the question about sure. oh, what staff is going to get funny to get it and you said you did it in five minutes. I did the interest the notice of interest. Um, it's in draft form right now. I'm having our engineers take a look at it, but it's a single page document. Yeah. This is what it is. I saw it okay. on the last page, but it's saying this saying this is saying that you're going to get a lost staff to submit an application for funding. Yes, that's the notice of interest to request for funding. That's all it is? Yes. So why do we have to do this reverse condition? Because in the in here it says this document is approved for submission by the governing body. It's not allowed to submit this without the governing body authorizing it to submit. So it doesn't this. tie anybody into writing a proposal or anything? This is the first step. step. This is just so all, all we're talking about is that last page. When you say we're we're talking about application. Yeah, we're talking about the council approving that we can submit the notice. Thank you. I'll make more people do it. 2247. Okay, thanks. Let's second that motion. Okay, we have a motion by Mike Martinez and a second by Rudy. All in favor? Opposed? All right, I've been waiting. All right, let's go to number four. 
Recommendation for approval of resolution 22-49 to submit an application for funding to the Mexico Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Management for pre-treatment system in the Diana scan. So this is a same thing, it's a resolution. So on the council support submitting the notice of interest, this particular project would be for a pre-treatment system up in the camp. Treating the water directly after it comes off the river. Pre-treat. Pre-treat the water. You get to send it back to a pipeline and back on the river. No, no, no. It goes through a pipeline. Once we take it off the river, we don't want to put it back in the river. We want to remove as much sediment as possible over the canyon and then send it to our reservoirs for would that be similar to the one that's currently? Oh. Um it there'll be similar components. It doesn't need all of the same uh Filter media probably doesn't need to be there for the sedimentation portion of a treatment system. That's for the engineers to look at and be able to design. Sure. My, my direction to the engineers would be help design a pre treatment system that fits up in the canyon that can be unmanned, that can remove sediment from the water to make it possible for our. Treatment system to treat the water. Will it be possible? It means possible. Uh, that's kind of ways up. We already have it's already the location of the pre treatment system would be on the store on the city's property, already where we have piping. So it's just interconnecting, take it off the river right where the ETH makes process, right through pre treatment system, put it back in the pipe, send it to our existing piping system. So uh, it would be in piping, it would be. Uh, just a uh, small packaged treatment system up with candy in the ATV package. Kind of like when we had this very But there would be more, uh, some of the components might be similar. Um, but that one has to be manned, and we don't want anything that's manned. We want to be able to let it run, and if it needs to shut down, it'll shut down on its own. Sorry for that. Sorry for that. I just said it seemed that it was not used as well. So, anybody agree that this is a needed? I think we have to do with the first two colleges that they did, but we just basically, this is the government obligated to have fun. So, with the legislation, it's been introduced with master. Uh, I, I, I don't know if I can really speak to that, yeah. the, the word obligated. Yeah, um, I, think there, I, I, I think there's, uh, the city's going to do everything we can to make sure that the federal government. Um, Which is why you put all this language in there. Well, it, it's going to make sure that the federal government takes on the responsibility. But, yeah. but we can't wait for them to do some of the stuff they're doing. We need to be moving forward. Yes, so it's, it's, it's like we need to look at every opportunity for funding and take advantage of those funding opportunities to get of projects. The same point can be done. Yeah. Now that is the fresh. Yes. I think we need to work. I feel it. Yeah. I feel like they if what you're explaining to them, if it admits that they were at fault. And I think the president of the government said that. They will make sure that all these things are taken care of, but you remind them, right? What I'm trying to do, what, what I'm trying to do is get, let everybody know what the needs are, let, it, let the federal government, the state government, the local community know what we're doing to the floor to, to be able to address the, the changes to our water quality, and that these projects are needed, and these are one of several potential funding sources. So we might as well go ahead and start asking for funding and go from there. Doesn't find us to accepting it, but we can't get it unless we ask for it. Well, it's better than being put out there. I should have put up this. I'm both. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, I'll move it towards resolution 2249. Did we have a place? Okay, we have a motion by Mike Martinez and a second by Rudy. All in favor? Opposed? Okay.
a movement to address recommendation on number five for approval of resolution 22 that should be to submit an application for funding to the New Mexico Department of Homeland Security and the Agency Management for Future Assistance and Storage Compost. So this would be a request to submit a notice of interest for a pre-treatment system to replace a temporary pre-treatment system. Okay. 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 That, that one would be expected to be in like, the same way. Same This one is going to be replaced by the temporary one that is there. That would be yes. Everything that needs to be able to suspect that it's still what we had to do would be replaced with a temporary Just to come out of the time, we're going to resolution for number 20, 2 50. Okay. So, we're going to have to pay some parts to buy out the units. But what I do with this? For a pre treatment system, destroy the infrastructure. Okay, we have a regular uh, motion by Rudy and a second by Mike. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Number six recommendation for approval of resolution 22 51 to submit an application for funding to the Mike's Code Department of Human Security of its management. For a new generator that the wastewater treatment. So the wastewater treatment plant is gravity fed. It has to operate no matter what. When power is out, we do have the potential for backups and overflows and challenges the wastewater plant. So we need to have a uh, generator power. We do have old generators out there, uh, but only um, there's a couple of buildings that are not uh, actually connected to those generators. Um, and so uh, as as the plant was upgraded, we said the generators were not necessarily um, connected to, to handle all the equipment up there. So we need to make sure that every building has the proper power and that those are uh, those generators that can handle the load and put shut down on us. How many were all the ones that uh, the, the update we looked in 2009? The original was from the first year. So, 40. Would it be um, the updating of the system? You think it would be the idea of the system? So, the, the system itself, the plant itself, was updated in 2006, 2007. So, there was a lot of modern equipment there, but the generators were not. There is some maintenance that has to be done. There's individual improvements that have to be done, not necessarily the whole system. So we are looking at things that we can do to, to meet the changing requirements for the R uh, permit permitting standards, the temporary the nutrients, the nutrients. We have to meet certain industry standards for getting a new permit, so those are going to change. So, we need to continue to make improvements at the plant. And there's a couple other projects we're working on that will take care of the plant itself. We've been in need of these generators for a few years. We had these power outages in January of 2019. Um, in, in 2013, the plants overflowed um, the flooding. Uh, in 2019, when we had the power outages, we actually had issues with even transporting. We had to get emergency generators up here from Albuquerque. They all just like attractive. Um, mm -hmm. So we were having a lot of issues with power lines down across the roads, unsafe for employees to come in and out, and then they couldn't run everything on the facility because of the lack of power. So well, we don't want that to happen again. And we couldn't get anybody in to work on the generators. The generators were having issues, the things were tripping, and power was out. And it was a big mess. So we need to make sure that doesn't happen. So we've actually been working on this for a couple of years. It's a um, rough estimate is that it's uh, over a half of a million dollars. Uh, Regenerators. Um, question. Um, 
And yeah, and then so then that's why it falls under the purview of the of these people. They really, in terms of funding, because it could become an emergency situation. It's been an emergency situation. Okay, we have a motion by Mike Martinez and Sandy by Ruby. All in favor? Aye. Okay. I think we're going to move it to find out for some updates. Up. What do you pour to project status? Um, so, on monthly reports, each division is uh, moving forward with critical. Items in their in their area. I don't have anything particular. Um, I guess actually, solid waste is planning on Amnes today. They probably got some land in both dates and expired. Water is water distribution, water treatment. All working every day on any water issues right now with the only water supply. Expedite actions of minimize water loss. Take care of any. Large system of distribution that we've initiated. Uh, gas is in the process of their annual inspections. And wastewater is in the process of some of their uh, permit updates. As well as we were able to hire a couple of people so we did their hands back around getting these gas. Project status, I think the biggest project to update everybody on is the retreatment system. So the retreatment system came online on September 5th. It's been operating every day since. We have gained water in Bradner. We're 36 days of water in Bradner. We, there was a period when we were having to take water off the of river. In the last couple of weeks prior to these most recent storms, it was helped to add some days to the, to the reservoir. After the storm, it's a bit confusing back up again, so we have to make, take the water off the river so it should be at least a problem. Okay. Okay. Uh, it is going through your story, you take the water and off the river. The gates open or closed? Open. The water to a close. Hmm. Is that the uh, uh, more than more than so? That story you can. So if, uh, the I don't have the correct answer for I don't have the answer for that. I can only go and walk what I was told story with my email. It's not created for flood control. It's created for that right. Do you have Private, I don't know. So, it's part of the so, 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 so. I'm just wondering if they're holding back on something. I, I don't know the answer to that. I know that it, it, they've stated to me that it's not for, for, for flood control. I don't have anything to say otherwise. It doesn't mean one way or the other. Um, but it, it, it does benefit that way. It does not kind of operate that way. Right? Yes. There's heavy flows that can get the road to story. But at the same point, it is, it does have well over half of our water storage available. So there is a set of giving it a high enough quality to get them to it. That's just something people might have to do. I don't actually have an answer. But I haven't seen any documents that tell me one way or the other. Um, so, in terms of the, uh, the, uh, the accountability, the amount of water left. How many days are we we're still looking at this? Oh, 36 of water. Of all of the water is what you're saying? 36 days of water in Bradner that we know can be treated in certain water streams. Okay, but well, it doesn't mean no amount of water, right? Correct. That's 36 days of Bradner. Now, we do also have water in story. That's continuing on water's pre treatment system, continuing to operate and um, it being a lot of that system can treat our system. So if, if we have drinking water in, in the bottom system, is it one of that dark you know, bunch of dark streets as we think? Um, what I mean to say is you know, you're gonna run out of water for the shower and take water bottles with your Yeah. Uh, as I can state before, if we're, and we're going in the right direction, so we're adding days 
Plus, we have the water and storage, which at that is a well of what it is. What are you letting the public do? Uh, the both. both. You know, the information is rather and the information is stored whenever we set out the numbers. Um, the statement that I know I made before was it's the drinking water standards caveat that, that we're saying. So if something were to happen and the treatment plant couldn't treat this water, we would still be able to put water in the pipes. It may not be sufficient. But again, right now we're going in the right direction with that number one. Keep going up so we get enough in storage that buys us the time for additional particular facilities, uh, additional improvements to the infrastructure that handle what we're going to be excited for. Many years. Many, many years. Yeah, yes. Even with the help of the government, it's, the, the surface area of the burn, the burn scarf that is high severity. Is almost unfathomable to manage for reseeding. A lot of it may be burned so severely that nothing is going to ever take on that soil again. Um, really, the time will be acreage is the, the area that the fire passed over is bigger than Los Angeles. Fire is 350,000 acres, um, but the area that burned is so actually physically burned, it's still substantial. And a lot of it goes to, like, to a high severity. Uh, for years, we're going to have that soil sloughing off into the river. Next year, and the following years, the trees are going to start right down. Um, we're going to be dealing with more debris as well as the same. more larger debris. Um, the trees that are holding back boulders, rocks, and other things will start going down. The people that are doing navigation, um, a lot of companies work with it, it seems like the kind of trucks that were the place. Um, are they helping with those issues? Or are they, are they taking care of the uh, the day to day? Which one do you want to get to my house? So, prior to what you're seeing right now, Army Corps uh, was helping out with cities with infrastructure protection. Um, there are NRCS was trying to help out with seeding or some other things that they might be able to help with. Um, a lot of it, since it's on private property, they have to have property owner permission. So, so we're working with property owners to get permission to access the properties to do the environmental cleanups to remove the debris. What you're seeing is the debris removal. That might be what you're saying is the debris removal. But they hire a lot of contractors for coming in and work with the property owners to remove the, whether it's the vegetation or the homes or whatever the public property that are out there. And that was following the hazardous materials inspection. That had to go first. Um, so that could be what you're seeing. You know, nothing happened inside city limits. Everything happened outside city limits. So it's all, like I said, it's really at county level. That that was a uh, good pairs. On the acreage part, uh, they didn't do it. How much of that acreage that is water Yeah, Well, it's the uh, I, I would have to go back to get you an exact number and I can see if anybody says to quantify that. If I recall uh, when the burned area of the SWAT team did their hazard or did their assessment, for some reason 25% sticks in my head as the area that was uh, high severity burn. And then I think it was up to 50% that was burned. So, um, the fire did pass over a lot of areas. There's still a lot of drinking, there's still a lot of transportation that was attached to homes there. But the, the area, especially up at our headwaters, is was part of the The headwaters are named from the new foundation that we do. The area going up to Calf Canyon and National Forest at the lot being set up um, at the end of I was 65 all the way out, it turns into a logging road. You do something. Um, it comes to a gate and it says National Forest yes. down here, and the log paths up there. That whole area, everything past that. A lot past that part. And the beginning of the watershed. Yes. The springs all the way to the top. Straight up that road. 
it'll get to a point that you can't go any higher. It's yours or Slex's other. Do you get as far as like Gap Canyon, that the road goes up to Gap Canyon and circle up? There's a house there. So what's your phrase? Water with that, uh, north, north west. Yeah. Mario, how much water does does that big thing that story is supposed to keep for a day or one foot five million? So it's how much water is in storage and it's supposed to be loaded? Six hundred acres. So not, uh, 200. Okay. I just wonder. You can basically add that to the one phase to get water. That's so, considering barring anything happening, the treatment plan it will take those up to like 100 days. It looks like about maybe 160 days. I don't, you know, I'm, just, I'm doing a rough estimate. Maybe 160 days, and it'll be exactly how many feet are going to be there. Um, as long as the water quality stays above what we've treated, then that water can be considered part of what we have to work towards a final solution. If that water quality ends up being contaminated to the point where even creatures treated with that one effect, um, as long as we don't have these large 3,000 and NTU, 4,000 acres of water flows or threat based to story, it's um, other than Canyon where these rains happened over the last few days, we've had I think it was 2,500 acres of By the time it Got through all the gap nodes and the diversion and the game pond, and it got down to the story. It was, and this was the next day for me, it was over 400 days. Still a lot higher than what our main treatment system can treat, and maybe higher than the pre treatment. We're expecting the pre treatment to be up to 300, but until we test it, we don't know. And you using the there, there is a storyline that goes from our, our main practice line that comes from the diversion down to the uh, treatment plant. There's a line that goes from the treatment plant over to story. It's a two way line. And it comes back. And I don't think it's just, it's just well, or on the MDF line is considered what's on the That's the other one, right? Because that's treated one. So MDF is treated one, line. it's a totally different line. I think that was for the pre treatment system of the house. And again, this is a rational work discussion. I have to pick back. Um, so that was project status on that one. We're also working on so in North Gonzales, we finished the water line replacement while we were doing that. Project included patching. The city wanted to, re to do the road curve to curve. That was not included in the project. The funding agency will pay to patch what has been exposed to the replacement water line or the gas line. The city came up with some additional funding, so we were able to curve the curve and do the asphalt. Those are considered two separate projects, which um, is why it takes the clear process takes a little bit longer. It wasn't under the the full project of painting was not underneath the NMFA fund, the SRF fund project. While well, we're doing that, um, we're doing. How much we're about we're doing like 45 projects. The one by the school is a little bit. But when it's not so you can see, it seems like it's taken for them. So, same thing with that one. We had funding to do the plaza. And we were planning on having additional funding available to do Camino. Um, then some of that funding was spent on other things in the Plaza project, and that project actually the funding ended up running out. Uh, and they had dropped the they had to drop dead date. They said, don't worry, finish it, you're done, get out of here, spend your money, get out of here. And so that portion wasn't done. Uh, and so we had to do that under city funds. Um, and so it's a whole new contract, a whole new procurement. What is the A process? Wait. I'm hoping to pay that uh, next week. 
than wanting to do it at the end of the North Gonzales, but I think the storm is going to do that. Every time it rains, it, it changes the project. It's simply remove all that wet dirt. So the sewer line portion has been moving along the water. The sewer line is moving along the water is delayed um, because of the interiors. Or there's, we're having, as a matter of fact, there's a project we're getting ready to uh, we need desperately. And I just have received confirmation that it's over 40 minutes to deliver the materials once they're ordered. So, and you can't order them, the contractor will order them until they have a, a legal binding contract with the city. So, we have projects that are a year out. We're going to move forward on that. So the hot springs project, uh, I don't have an end date on that one because we're still waiting for uh, I think we just extend the the schedule by a few months. The same thing happened on Rockwell Falls. That's why this is what I need the materials. And the, the thing is uh, the thing with these projects is when they're funded, they have to once you sign the contracts, they have to start and you can't stop until you get to stop the point. So we do these projects because SRF and the end of basis. We've got a signed contract, contract needs to move forward. The only thing that the contract can do is weather or materials, valid reason why the contract needs to be built. So the contract gets stars at go and they have to stop until the materials are Materials issues are nationwide. And there's some stuff we were looking at, like more than six months ago. At least it's one to some five days or four days. There's going to be gas days. Last parts. So it's your little part of the ball too. Is that possible? Yeah, you can see the ball too. Yeah, it's going to be still the same thing. It's going to be 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 the same thing. Uh, is there a particular project? Yeah, what's going on, buckets? Baca, um, Baca and Park, Park View, Parkway. It's Baca between. There's two other projects. Actually, they're really so we have two water line projects that were funded under I believe ARPA funded the federal government. Um, same thing, they got they were given the notice to go ahead, but they had to wait till they got materials, it took many, many months to get materials in. And because of the water restrictions right now, they're gonna have to stop and say, you know, parts of the stop because they can't fresh test orders the water lines for that water. So Parkway, parking, one up behind Walgreens. Uh, water on the store there, but that's on hold for getting it offline. Uh, it will be the same way. It's a little bit on hold. So we can test it. So we have enough water to be able to take testing. There's the first location. Any questions? Anything else? Uh, member comments? Come on. Let's go ahead and call this meeting adjourned. At Two seventeen minutes. Yeah. Yep. Recording. And shot you. And you, Shawnee. Recording has been stopped. Thank you, Shawnee.